Unfathomable range, power, and synergies with other monkey towers and heroes put all balloons under assault. That is the Nautic Siege Core, the monkey sub paragon that is coming out in update 41.0. First off, this is early access, so big thanks to Ninja Kiwi. Can we take a moment to look at how big and chunky that sub is, though? Sheesh. People are already making memes of the sub paragon monkey's um, expression, if you will. On top of the paragon, this update also includes uh, a new map fit for the paragon self for springs, uh, as well as co-op bosses, uh, map editor props, uh, new quests, trophy store items, quality of life, and balance changes. Uh, patch notes I will link in the description. And also, if you'd like to take 10 seconds out of your day just to do this, click here, here, and here if you haven't already. Would be very cool of you to do, thanks. Now, I already have a kind of decent farming setup going for the sub paragon, so we should afford it in no time. The cost of the Paragon, if you didn't see it earlier, is only 400k. So don't expect this Paragon to get to like round 200, 300 solo. But I definitely ex expect it to pack a big punch, at least against single targets, you know, because of that first strike. Anyways, if you want to take a look at just how this map works. Well, it is an intermediate, so it, it ends up being pretty easy. First off, every balloon takes one loop around up here first. And I, I, won't, I purposely won't upgrade it to show you. That takes, yet again, another loop around the uh, giant circle in the middle. And, uh, of course, there's just the greatest spot ever for towers, for water towers in the middle. I do believe you can place other land towers, though, a bit on the edge, so I think that makes it even easier. And I guess allows for more viable non-water and non-infinite range strategies, but I think with that, this might be one of the easier intermediates, just my guess. Any easter eggs that I've found uh, when playing this map? Not really so far, other than um, these little easter eggs. I do notice though that if you click the geyser, uh, just water splashes out. Although, uh, spamming it doesn't do anything, it seems. Now, if I remember this carefully, the non exchange core is only the third cheapest paragon. Also, um, nice alignment on this reward section here. I wonder if that'll um, make it through to the live version of the game. As I was saying about the price, I guess it does make sense because if you take into account the cost of uh, all tier 5 subs, they're pretty average. In fact, I think all tier 5 boomerangs are more expensive than uh, all tier 5 subs. If you ask me, I think that's how they should price Paragons based on the cost, or at least approximately based on the cost of the tier 5. I guess both though is cheaper overall, but it's still more expensive with a Navarc. Not saying that the prices should align fully of Paragon to Tier 5s, but, you know, close enough, and I think that falls under that. Also, because of the Paragon Slider, I should probably farm more than just the allotted 400k. Because, you know, we're not just looking for a weak degree 1 sub Paragon. We want... Um, I, I like to try for at least 50. So first off, we need to get 250k of first strikes. This is 5% more efficient than using the Cash Slider. To do that... You definitely would want to do first strikes. First strikes are like sixteen thousand dollars each, something like that. Seventeen. Actually, you know the two hundred fifty k I said earlier. Technically, we can go over that if we're spending money just on first strikes. And this now makes it thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Ah, oh, I can't get the seventeenth for the full one hundred tiers that you need to sacrifice. Well, I mean, nobody said I could use powers, right? Or I couldn't use powers, right? So don't mind if I do. In fact, if we're just thinking about sub paragon placement right now. We probably would want at least um, it to be an essential spot, because if it includes all tier 5 paths, then we want Energizer. That damage over time from the Energizer, so therefore, I think where this first strike is is actually the best spot for it. Let me just nuke out. Run 100 real quick though. Pick up Energizer and move it something like here. It better have increased range, otherwise this is all for naught. Alright, money is there now. I guess I don't need to do a max cash sacrifice, but I need to get it now, otherwise I'll die. So, use all the money we can, and if it's degree 50, I will take it. Let's go. Sub Paragon gets 48. You know what? I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that too. Close enough. So here it is, ladies and gents. Makes perfect sense why this is a new map. Also, that range is so tiny. But that's fine, because I'm, I assume it has advanced intel, so, uh, like, at least uh, for its unsubmerged version you uh, can still see, uh, well, the entrance of the map. But this is what's up. It just fires a barrage of preemptive missiles. Hence the middle path blue at that, blue at that to fit the theme of it. It feels like visual-wise, the Nautic Siege Core, like, mostly resembles the Sub Commander. I don't see as much Energizer and preemptive parts aside from, I guess, the 
sub on the very bottom of the Energizer sub. And also, could I take a moment to talk about the uh, the name of the Paragon itself, Nautic Siege Core? When I heard of it, I first thought this sounded like uh, a resource in a game. Like, does it not? It sounds like one of those components you would need to craft to get something stronger. But no, in BT6, this is indeed the strongest thing, the core. Now, there's also an ability, as you can see. They call this the Final Strike, at least in the Axis video. I'd assume it's just an unofficial name because there's no in-game name for abilities on Paragons, but that is the best name I've ever heard. Makes perfect sense. You got First Strike, and then you got Final Strike. It's kind of hard to see with all the preemptive missiles in the way, but I'm pretty sure the main uh, projectiles that the Paragon is also shooting out do also include the Ballistic Missile Explosion. Although, uh, I'll be able to see that more clearly later on once Luins aren't in a skill, and I want to wait to 119 to use the ability. So, here we go. Final Strike. Uh, wait a minute. We have to wait 15 seconds? No way. Well, here comes the countdown. Three, two, one. And there it is. Oh my god. We melted those bads into just a green glowing puddle. That's right, we now have Chernobyl at home. All this time, I also haven't talked about this. Notice that there's an icon here. A submerge icon. I believe this is added, well, this update. Let me just show you, even for a 300, they add this. From what I see, this is basically an easier way of accessing the submerge. So, instead of having to tab, like, because right now, submerge, or before, Submerge would be b between strong and first. Now, you just press the button. Is there any way to... Unfortunately, there's no hotkey. Which is, um... I guess the one downside, if you're playing on PC and you like microing hard. I remember the days of challenges where I could, like, spam tab and then alt tab to... Go back and forth between first and submerge, but... I think now we have to press a button. That being said, what does it do when we submerge the monkey sub? Well, if you... Listen to the access video, what it does is it turns it into, uh, like, it doing energizer damage. So you see it ticking. It's very weak, though. However, when it's submerged, it cr it gives a massive buff to uh, all of your subs and other heroes, it seems. So let me... I should move Brickle back, eh? Like, I'll drop a sub here, and you can see that there's an icon grayed out because uh, it appears that, I guess, if it's doing, uh, you know, raw DPS, then it's not going to work. You're not going to get a bonus. Let's just test with the 200. See if we can see if we can see how much damage it's doing. I think it's only one. Yeah, one damage only. But watch this now for 131. Oh, you also don't get preemptive missiles at all when you submerge it. Sheesh. Well, I want you to watch carefully of that subs that subs damage. Look how much faster it's going up by. I actually did do some uh, quick sample testing before this, and I believe it's a plus six damage buff. This this means each dart from the sub is now doing seven damage. Pretty insane buff, but we have to ask, is that plus 6 damage really worth, like, not getting anything out of the sub Paragon? Because I'm not sure, personally. Also, what if I... I kind of want to try this. Let me see if I can submerge the sub, and then use the final strike ability. Yes, yeah, so we can indeed have it do 0 damage while we're waiting for the cooldown. Um, Hopefully these BPs don't exit in time. Please don't. 3, 2, 1. And let's see what happens. Uh, it didn't actually beat every beefy. That's probably because there was only a couple missiles. I know this has a massive splash radius, though. Overall, very, very, very fun stuff. Now, I just want to test if we're getting the cooldown reduction. Or rather, if it stacks with Energizer. Probably not. I'm just going to test real quick. Is it just me, or does it slow down? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need to look at that again after. But it feels like we're not getting the CDR. Unless we submerge it. Oh, and that's actually kind of counterintuitive. Because... Uh, that if you go for this Energizer, then you lose the solo bonus. 25% extra damage. Ouch. Anyways, we have to find a strike for round 140 here. First off, preemptive missiles. Or at least DPS-wise, we're doing like 10,000. Oh, also, yes, it's soft stacking entirely. I see when we charge up the final strike. Oh, this is going to make the one Paragon test really impossible, isn't it? Or at least it's very hard to pull off. Well... Oh my god, it didn't one-shot the F-pad. Again, it's not a degree 100, so that might play a part in it, but still. <laughs> feel like if I leave it unsubmerged, wouldn't that do a lot better? I know it's just not bad, but I'm pretty sure in the 15 seconds, like, this takes less than 7.5 seconds to be that, that bad there. I'd also like to try this. If I submerge it, does the cooldown of the final strike become any faster? To me, 
Theo's like, no, it's super slow. Submerged or unsubmerged. I think personally that would be a pretty cool synergy. Like alongside the buffs, the damage buffs that I get. I did some short sandbox testing before, before this one also. And uh, I also noticed this discovery. If I submerge it, for some reason Icon shows up under the boat. Or even any other time, not just the boat. Like uh, I'll get a Kira flagship for example. And I'll get like a random dart monkey and then I'll submerge it. Look, dart monkey has Icon. Let's not die now. Unfortunately, this is purely visual, though, if I uh, submerge it again. See, Dark Monkey only does one damage at a time. Okay, how about the boat, though? Submerge it? Nope, that's also one damage. So it's just a visual thing. Also, thank goodness I didn't sell the farms, because I actually want to try this thing, too. What if I went for the Boat Paragon? The Nave Arc, because uh, several updates ago, they made it so that the uh, attack speed buff you get from Nave Arc applies to the Monkey Ace Paragon, the Goliath Doomship, and it should apply to the other water, you know, based Paragon too, the sub. So I suppose we'll just wait a few more rounds to check that out. I also kind of want to use this time to talk about other parts of this update that is actually garnering a lot of attention. Unrelated to sub Paragon, but I figured you guys might know if you haven't seen. First things first, I'll start with the lighter change, Apocalypse. Have you ever had trouble with Apocalypse mode in the past? Well, should be no longer, because now it actually gives you end of round cash. Before, if you beat round 1, you simply just start round 2 without the extra 100 cash that you're usually given, but... That's a huge buff to the game mode, as in, it makes it so much easier. Now, I'll be the last to tell you how much experience I have in playing Apocalypse on the hardest maps, but... I guess every time I play Apocalypse, I am shoehorned into, like, a similar strategy. Because there's really not much you can do early game when you're given so little end of round cash. But now I think it's too much because uh, Apocalypse generally, I think in the early rounds, has more RBE per round than the normal game modes. And so that gives you more money, even more money to work with. So this isn't just some minor change because by round 30, you'll already have over uh, like 3,000 extra dollars to work with. And that is crazy significant. Anyways, that's all for Apocalypse. Everybody's talking about chimps though. In chimps mode... I'll show you uh, the full balance changes that they listed, but essentially, losing in a chimps run no longer completely kills your run, as in there's only a restart button. Now there's a retry last round option, similar to how it works in Challenge Editor. From what I see, the reason they're doing this is to make it more approachable to new players, because uh, I guess every other game mode at the moment has a way out. Obviously, it costs monkey money and uh, possibly real money if you don't have any uh, monkey money to continue. But as of right now, if you die on round 99 on Chimps, you cannot salvage it, as opposed to dying on round 99 on, like, Impopable. Which is definitely frustrating for a lot of players. And this doesn't kill, like, make Black Border runs any harder, because obviously, this doesn't apply to that, that case. I, for one, am actually very happy with this change, because for a lot of my videos, I like to do Chimps challenge runs, and every single time, I either have to use a mod to turn on retry last round, or do it in Challenge Editor, where I end up not getting rewards for... Well, playing it because it's a custom game. But now I can double dip. And now I don't have to worry about, you know, setting up the modifiers. So I really appreciate that change. Not sure who would actually be against it. But I like it. And if it gets people to uh, play the hardest game mode more and uh, increase their skill level, then I'm all for it. This also confuses a lot of people and no amount of explaining will help it. But the C in Chimp stands for literal continues, aka the continues that you get outside of chimps when you die that give you extra money in the game as well as uh, restarting your defense from what it was when you died as opposed to what it was before the round started. So and no, this does not mean chimps has been turned into himps mode. Rest assured, it's still all fair game. It's essentially as if you just uh, uh, press the pause button before you end up dying. That's really all this changes. Anyways, uh, we are, uh, I think, going to be very close to dying here. I swear I died there. But I guess not. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, let's get it now. So just a simple degree one. Oh, I don't have money. God damn, the margins really are tight. Let's get though. Navark. And let's click. Nice. We do indeed get that buff. Perhaps I could be wrong about this because this is my first game and my only run with the final strike so far. But I feel like that ability is just not that great. Like, let's try to cool it off for uh, right now, for example. Blast off and then also use the um, boat hook in at the same time. Pretty sure the Navar, yeah, its cooldown is so much faster and it already starts having to wait 15 seconds. But let me just show you once again. Let's just nuke out all these UMGs. 
It didn't even pop all of them. But look, <laughs> by the time uh, the Navark has cooled off its one ability, of which you can use two per round, the final strike got 10% of its cooldown off. Are you kidding me? So something's gotta change, I feel. Either the, like, the cooldown, or, uh, I don't know, the amount of time before the countdown. <laughs> no, also keep in mind this is only degree 9, so the cooldowns are faster as the degree is higher. I'm just surprised that the cooldowns are slow for <laughs> a degree 48. This is worse than Metamorphosis, I feel like. Also, one more quick test here. But you need to have the towers in range, much like the Sub Commander, for the Sub Paragon to work. Although, the Monkey Knowledge where Sub Commander affects everything on screen, I feel like should apply in this case. Although, but it doesn't right now. <laughs> Maybe that's another, you know, quality of life buff they could give. You bet for round 200 here, I'm going to be using the final strike. First off, let's hope the bat doesn't exit before it goes off. So we can see the exact damage because we know this is not going to pop. 396, all the way to 500 and something. So a little bit over 100k damage, single target. Not bad, but I can simply get uh, 500,000 damage by pressing this button. And there she goes. I wonder if the green glob actually uh, does damage over time to balloons on screen. But regardless, that is the sub paragon, folks. Uh, not the strongest. Makes sense given the cost, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. Now, just for some funny sandbox testing, what if we use nothing on the screen? It's as you would expect. Actually, is it waiting for a balloon to come out and then? Okay. Let me send the scariest balloon of them all first. Definitely not overkill. And now let's send a bunch of rainbows out. And it does pop, yep. The sub is not doing anything to it. Sending bulbs out too. Instantly wiped out by the green glob on the, on the field. Uh, even ZMGs too, what the heck? So perhaps maybe I underestimated the power of the... You know, the stuff on the track. Good thing I did a quick sandbox test. And also real quick, how much does Preemptive do at degree 56? 219 to 221, so only 2000. And that's all the testing I want to do for now. Again, thank you all for watching. Subscribe for more 41.0 update content. Peace.